Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Are you happy to be here? Now, are you really happy to be here? Is that how you happy? If that is how you happy, then I don't know when you how. If I if you are sad, how would you respond? Remember, if you are happy, you must be, happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. Amen. That uh, it makes it a whole lot easier for me, friends. You must remember that I am a, a visitor. It is my first time that I find myself in a church like this. And um, I'm from South Africa. My name is Dennis Gregory Howard. I'm a minister in the Mitchell's Plain District. I have 11 churches under me. I am married to a very, very beautiful woman. She's, she's the most gorgeous woman on the face of the earth. Mm, just. Mm. <laughs> I have two sons. Their names are Regan and Kemsley. My eldest son is uh, 36 years of age, and my baby son is 31. The eldest is Regan. The baby is Kemsley. My wife's name is Lorna, and my eldest son is married, and uh, I have a beautiful grandson. That is why you will notice that when they were telling the children's story, I always go up to be part of the children's story, because when you have a grandson, you know, the grandfathers are always, you know, want to listen to children's stories so that you know what kind of stories you can tell them. But I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm truly privileged. But first and foremost, I would like to say thank you to uh, the pastor, the conference president for the opportunity that I have. Um, it is God ordained that I am standing in front of you here today. I'm not here by chance. God sent me to this church to you for today. How do I know that? Is we have a group there where we are, and in the group, each and every week we go to a different church, and every week there's a different speaker. Um, my name was put down week before last that I will be preaching at the third time, and we did not know that we are going to be at Nairobi Central. We did not know where we go. We don't know where we go until it's Monday. Are you with me? And then they tell us that is the church that you're going to. So God appointed that I should be here with you today. So are you happy to see me? Yes. Amen. And uh, I would like to also thank my, my fellows. Um, that's Oscar, Pastor Oscar Mbata. Please, hands up. Please stand. That is uh, Pastor Mbata. Um, remember, as they say, when it comes to their names, sometimes it's a little difficult. Say something, my pastor. That is our evangelist. That is Pastor Mbaza. Next to him is Pastor Israel Changazi. Please, Pastor Changazi, say something. Amen. Amen. And uh, next to him, as has been said by the uh, pastor, that is Pastor Trasmo Parangeta. And as you know, our leader is Pastor Haitan Amweni. Uh, he is the one that is behind me, and uh, um, he, he is the, the elder of the group. Pastor Amweni, please, once again, would you kindly greet the group? God is good. God is good. And you will notice that based on the different voices of the different people, that we have different preachers among you. Are you with me? You have those who are powerful, you have those that are mediocre, and then you have those like me. Are you with me? <laughs> and at the end of the day, we have to find a place and space where we fit ourselves in. Are you with me? And uh, I'm happy to be here. It is my privilege. It is my honor. And I know that God has something important. And you will notice that I am the lightest among them. Have you seen that? <laughs> I am the one who is fair. So whenever we take a photo, I stand in the middle of the photo. And the two of them stand on this side, and the two of them stand on that side. And the reason they stand on that side is, I say, if you put the color in the middle, the picture will be bright. <laughs> so that is why I, 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 I am part of the group. Are you with me? But we are servants of the great God of 
the heavens. And uh, we are privileged to be here, and we want to say thank you so much for this opportunity and time that we have to spend and share. I just thought I'd give a little bit of that as part of the intro so that we can get to know each other and where we are. We are busy with our demon program at AUA. Um, yesterday was the 44th day that I'm in Kenya. Are you with me? 44 days without my wife. Mm. <laughs> I have struggled. And the problem is there are now still 44 more days until I go home. <laughs> but we are grateful and we are thankful to the Lord. The challenge and the struggle that I have found that as I have come to Ethiopia, you'll have an interesting way of eating food. I have lost four kgs since I have come because at home the food is different and you have different food. It's not, it's not that, the, that the food is bad, it's that I'm not used to it. So I am learning every day as I go to acclimatize and enjoy the food. So um, when my wife sees me, she's going to say, mm -hmm. Because when I left, I was much bigger than I am now. So now I've gone a little smaller, so she will like me, because then I will be able to fit into her size. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Friends, I'm happy to be here. And I want to say it is my privilege, it's my honor. And I want to let you know that I'm happy to be here. I greet you all in that beautiful and lovely name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as I greet you in that beautiful name of Christ, I want to say that when we stand and when we preach, we only preach what God would have us preach. Are you with me? He is the one that will lead, guide, and direct. And as he leads, guides, and directs, what the message is that he has placed upon my heart is a message for myself. And I have prayed since I've been told that I'm speaking to you, that God leads me, that I give a word for you. As you know, you can see there's a table in front. And that table is a special table. Today is the day of Holy Communion. I was informed that it will be Holy Communion. And I love to preach on Holy Communion because this is the highest and the best day that the Seventh-day Adventist Church has. Are you with me? It is the time when God's people come together. It is the time when they come together. And as we reflect, each one of us, can I see all those who don't have trouble in their lives here? All those who are trouble-free. Can I see your hands? Is my hand the only one that is up? Remember, we are children of God. Never mind what trouble, what trials, what situation you have, God is with you. Is he not? Does God not carry you? Yes, he does. Now, before I start with the service, because it is Holy Communion service, and because it is an important service, and because you have to prepare your heart and mind for the service, and because you have to be in the right place for the service, I want you there where you are sitting, I want you to turn to your neighbor, the one sitting next to you. I want you to turn and look into their eyes and give them your best smile. Please turn to your neighbor, the one next to you. Put on your best smile. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can I, can I? Oh, no, no, no. Shh. I've only asked you to turn to your neighbor. Look into their eyes. I, that is what I want you to do. Then you follow after me. Look into their eyes and give them your best smile. Are you with me? Turn to your neighbor. Look into their eyes and give them your biggest smile. Now, as you're looking at, uh, to them, say neighbor. 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 It's good to see you here. It's good to see you here. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And I love you too. I want to bless you. I want to bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I noticed that some of the young people were looking to see where is the one that he likes so that he can look into that one's eyes. And perhaps to that one who is the one that he, I love you too. <laughs> but remember, we are in the house of the Lord and that is not the time for that. Are you with me? So now that we have expressed love for each other, now that you are at the place where we love one another, it is at the time when this table becomes important. Are you with me? And I know that there is a service, but I prepare for Holy Communion. I was told it is Holy Communion. So I will be preaching 
around this service that is in front of us here today. Are you with me? Let us close our eyes for prayer. Father God, it is my time to talk to your sons and daughters. And Father, as I speak to your children, I want to ask that you be the great God of heaven. I want you to come down and spend some time with us, Lord. For today we have need of you. There are some here who might have issues one with each other. There might be those here between husband and wife, between mother and father, son and daughter, church member and other member. Whatever the circumstances, Lord, I don't know what these people's challenges are, but what I do know is that you are the great God of heaven. And as you've sent me here, Lord, to speak to your sons and daughters, I pray that you would touch my lips, that you would reach and speak to me, through me, to us, that when all is said and done, that there will not be a single person who will walk away from your table, but who will choose to put their feet under the table that is the table of the great God of heaven, that we may wash one another's feet. And as we do so, may we do it in the spirit of humility, for we ask it in your name. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. Our message title for today is, Christ is our only hope. Say it after me. Christ is our only hope. Christ is our only hope. Amen. We live in a world full of challenges. We live in a world full of trials. We live in a world where as brothers, sisters, and as members and people in Christ, there are always issues and items that come up. And as these issues and items come up, when it comes to a time of Holy Communion, when Holy Communion comes up, how many times a year do we have Holy Communion? How many times? There are four times a year that we have Holy Communion. Once a quarter, once every three months, we come together where we wash each other's feet. Now, why do we come together to wash each other's feet? Why do we do it? Come, let me hear. Why do we wash each other's feet? Sorry? We come together because in the three months, what can happen is sometimes we can do things that are challenges to one another. And it is an opportunity and a time that God affords us that as we come into the presence of each other, that we can go down on our knees and bow before the person, wash that person's feet. And as you do that, you set the page and the paper right between your brother and sister. I would like them at the back to please project onto the screen the text, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, please, verse 31, if they can just put it on there. Now you will see there is a text there, verse 31, my friend, 8, uh, eight verse 31. Um, verse 31, I see he has 33. Romans 38, 31, there it is. Now, when we talk about Holy Communion, and when we come into the presence of God, and when Christ is our only hope, and when He becomes the one that we turn our face to, and when we come to the place where we repair the bridges that are broken, verse 31 says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now the challenge is that you will notice that sometimes... I told you, I'm married to the most beautiful woman under the sun. And there are some times when I say or do something wrong that she does not like. Are you with me? And when I say or do say something wrong to my wife, what happens is in that time she becomes cross with me. Are you with me? Doesn't want to talk to me, doesn't want to look at me. And uh, so when I've done something wrong and I come to her and I say, Sweetheart, how are you? She says, I'm not talking to you. I say, Sweetheart, how are you? She says, I'm not talking to you. So she goes and stands there by the dish where she's washing the dishes. And as she washes the dishes, she's cross. She turns her back to me and she's not talking to me. So what I go and do is I go to her and I kiss her in the neck and I say, hmm, sweetheart, I love you very much. Do you know that I'm married to you for 37 long, hard, difficult years? She said, I'm not talking to you. I say, sweetheart, do you know I paid for our wedding? She says, that doesn't matter. I say, sweetheart, do you know we have two beautiful children? And then she says, I'm not talking to you. And then I turn her around and I kiss her on this neck and I kiss her on that neck and say, mm, I love you very much. I go to the next neck and say, mm, I love you very much. And when I do that, then, never mind how angry she is, she will turn and she will put her arms around me and she will hold me. Because whatever is our problem, a problem should not be big enough that it should separate us. Are you with me? 
What then shall we say on these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Because Christ is our only hope, and we live in a world, we live in a society where we face many challenges. And as we face challenges, God says all these things, life, circumstances, the challenges, the issues, the items that we face, the problems that we go through, this is part and parcel of life. Can I see those, all those who are married here? All the married couples, can you put up your hands, please? All the married couples, amen. Now, please put on your hands. I have a question I'd like to ask the married couples. I assume that last night when you went to bed, you slept next to the person who is your partner. Are you with me? You slept next to that person. You weren't somewhere else. Can I see all those who slept somewhere else last night? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't resist it. Now, remember, last night you slept next to the person that is your partner. Are you with me? And this morning when you opened your eyes, the first thing you should have done when you opened your eyes, you were supposed to say thank you to God for watching you and taking care and giving you new life. That is the first thing you were supposed to do. Can I see all those who prayed the first thing this morning? Hands, please. Now, the second thing that you were supposed to do is you were supposed to lean over to the one that you were sleeping next to and you were supposed to say, good morning, my love. Did you sleep very nice? I love you very much. Can I see the hands of all the married couples that did that? Am I the only one who kissed? Oh, sorry, I didn't kiss my wife. <laughs> Can I see the hands of those who did that? Now, friends, if you are going with my message and if you want to get my introduction, I need you to understand something important. The one that you are married to is, should be the most important person in your life. Are you with me? Now, I have a question to ask. If the person that you were lying next to you passed away during the night, and you do not take the time or the time to kiss that person, to show how much you love that person, how will that person know? Are you with me? Are you getting me? How, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who will be against us? As Christians, we need to formulate within our Christianity the kind of relationship that we have with one another, that when people see us, they know who God is. They need to see God in us. If Christ is our hope and he is the one that we depend on and he is the one that we walk, the way you walk in life, the things that you do and the things that are important, people must be able to see that you know Christ because uh, can you move to verse 32 on the screen, please? Remember what verse 31 says? Verse 32. And it says there, what does it say? He that spared not his own son but delivered him us for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all these things. Now when Christ is who you are and in whom you believe, in whom you trust, everything in your life that you do, every circumstance, every challenge, you need to reflect Christ. Now I have a question that I want to ask you. Can I see the hands of all the Christians in this place? All the Christians, please raise your hands. And there are some who are not quite sure. But now remember... All those who raise their hand and call themselves Christians, I have this question that I'd like to ask you. And I want you to answer this question very carefully. For all those that have raised their hands, for the people that can see your neighbors, your wife, your children, those that you work with, those that you go to school with, can I see the hands of those that when they see you, they see Christ in you? Can I see your hands, please? Lord, have mercy. Now, if you are a Christian, if Christ is in you and Christ is your only hope, when other people see you, who should they see? Now, when I ask you the question for all the Christians, you raise your hands. Yet when I ask you the question, when those whom you come into association with and those you spend time with, that they can't see Christ in you, then is there a problem? Is there a problem? What is the problem? Who's the problem? Sorry? Now, friends, can I see all the baptized members in this place? Please raise your hands. Now, if you're a baptized member of this church, 
He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Christianity is not something that you speak with your mouth. It's not me with the Bible under my arm. It's not me singing songs of praise. It's not me doing the things or being reverent in the church. It is me reflecting and being like Christ. It is me that where I walk and where I talk and where I go, people see Christ in me. And if they cannot see Christ in me, then you and I are failing at what we are doing. You and I are a challenge for God. You and I are at the place where we, because Christ is our only hope, and you can see, I'm coming to the front, and I'm coming to the front where there is a table, because I want to take you to the next verse, and what does the next verse say? Verse 33. Please, verse 33, my friend. Who shall lay all things to the charge of God's elect, God that justifieth? Now, next verse, verse 34, says something important. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather he that is risen again, who is given at the right hand of God, who makes intercession for us. The only person that can condemn you and me is Christ. The only one that can hold things against us is Christ. Now, the problem that I have when I deal with my members and when I speak to my church members and the challenge that I have is that when we come to the place and space where we walk and talk and we call ourselves Christians and we say we belong to God and our actions does not reflect that, then you and I are a problem, are we not? And the problem is that we are not representing the one in whom we dwell, the one in whom we serve, the one in whom we walk. Because if I fight with my brother, if I fight with my sister, if I fight with my wife, and I cannot have the love of God, then there is something that is missing from me. And when it comes to a table like this, if you have all kept your hands down, it means that you are not going to become part and parcel of this table, is it not? And if you are not part and parcel of this table, now I have a question for you. For who is this table? For saints? For who? For who? Can I see the hands of all the sinners in the house? All the, ah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Are you with me? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of? Of God. But you have a trick. What do you all call it? Sorry? The one before, before you, you uh, what standard do you have in, uh, here in Kenya? Sorry? Standard 8. Standard 8 is the, is the highest one, and then you go from there to university. No, no, no. Which one is it? Now, Form 4. The one before Form 4 is Form? Now, Form 3 is the one before Form 4, and when you get to Form 4, you go to? University. Now, my son was in Form 3. Are you with me? Now, when they in Form 3, when they go to Form 4, what happens is they normally have a ball. I don't know if they do it here in Kenya, where they come together to have a party. You know where they're going to celebrate that they have now finished with high school. Are you with me? Now, back in South Africa, what they have is they have a matric ball. Now, my son was in the standard just below that. And one day, he came. I came, from, I came home from church. And when I came home from church, my son was waiting for me at the door. And when I came home, my son said, Daddy, I need you to sit down.
the neck here, started bulging. And the fire inside of me started to blow. But I'm, I'm sitting. I said, excuse me? He says, no, that is what I'm going to do. He says, I want you to know so that you are under no misconceptions of what is going to take place. He says, when we have a matric ball, before we go to the after party, what they do is they give us very nice food to eat. So I'm going to eat, and I'm going to make my stomach nice and full. And he says, when my stomach is nice and full, I'm then going to go to the after party. And when I go to the after party, what happens is I'm going to take all this alcohol and I'm going to mix it together. And he says, when I mix it together, I'm going to drink it. And he says, when I drink this stuff, what it is going to do, because I've never drank before in my life, it is going to mix with all the stuff inside of me. And it's going to create a problem. And now you must know, by hay starting and all the gazi inside of me, and all, and, and I just want to stand up and I want to put my hair, hair, you know. But something said to me, I need to listen. And I sat and listened and he said, Dad, when I do this, what are you going to do? <laughs> and I listened, and you must know, when he asked me the question, what am I going to do? Now you must know the steam was starting to sh out of this side and that side. And as he spoke, I, he says, now, Dad, when I'm finished drinking and when I'm finished partying, and I'm going to be nice and drunk. He says, then I'm going to come home to this house where you live. <laughs> to your house. And he says, when I come to this house, I'm going to come and knock on your door. And he says, when I knock on your door, I don't want you to send mommy, your wife, to come and open the door. I want you to come open the door. And now you must remember inside of me, you're inside here, it's not quite all right. Are you with me? But I'm sitting and I'm, as he's talking, I'm, 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 I'm saying, God, please help me. Please help me. And then he says, when I come to the door and knock on the door, when you come to the door and you open the door, because I've been eating a lot of different food and because I was drinking all this stuff, he says, something is going to happen. I said, what is going to happen, my son? He says, I want you to know something is going to happen. He says, when you come and open the door, because of all the stuff inside of me, I am going to take it and I'm going to spew all over you. And then he asked me a question. He says, Dad, what are you going
I had taught him and everything that he knows and everything that he should know about the God of heaven and the God he should serve. He comes at 17 years of age and he asks me the question that if he's going to spew all over me, what am I going to do? And as these thoughts ran through my mind and as I looked at all these things, I understood the gospel better than I've ever understood it in all my life. And when my son said that to me, inside of me I was struggling. I was fighting. Because the Christian in me does not understand the Christianity of God. I wanted to put my hands around his neck. I wanted to choke him for what he was thinking. Because that is how sometimes you and I deal with Christ. And that is sometimes how we deal with the church. But you see, the problem is, in order to be a child of Christ, you have to be somebody that is different. And when he said those words to me, the thing that God showed me was the day that when God hung on the cross, and when he said these words, he that condemned Christ died, yea, rather that he is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, does intercession. When you and I face life and we are in trouble and we struggle with life, Sometimes we face things that are a challenge. Sometimes the church is a problem. Sometimes your home, your life is a problem. Sometimes things don't work out the way that you want them to work out. But when you're a child of God, you need to be different. And it was that day that my son taught me a lesson that I never ever forget, forgot for the rest of my life. Because you see, my son knew that his father was a minister. He knew that his son his father preaches to different churches. He knew that I was in charge of districts. He knew who I was and he grew up in this church. He saw this church and he knew this church. But you see, the problem with my son was the things that were said and the things that you do are not the same. He was showing me that you can preach, you can teach, you can act, you can be. But to be like God is something else. And when he said these words to me, what I said to him, he says, Daddy, what are you going to do? And I said to him, and I said this with tears in my eyes, I said, my son, when you spewed all over me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to a bath. I'm going to run the bath water. I'm going to take off your clothes and I'm going to wash you. And I'm going to kneel beside your bed and I'm going to thank God each day for the child that he gave me. And I said, I'm going to hold you in my arms and I'm going to tell you how much God loves you. And I'm going to tell you how much God means to you. Because you see, my son was not interested in what I said. Because as ministers and as people and as leaders in the church, sometimes we can preach and we can do and we can do so many things. But to be a Christian is not what you say. It is who you are. It is what comes from inside. It is what this table is all about. It is a place and time when you realize that he who condemns is only God. God can judge God knows the differences between us. God knows our challenges. And God is the only person that can point a finger at any one of us in this place. When somebody tells you you are not worth it, when somebody says you are of no value, you can tell them that you are a child of God. Christ is our only hope. He is the one in whom we trust. And I said to him, my son, I will bath you and I will wash you. I will take you and I will put you in a bed. And when I put you in a bed, I will cover you and I will lie next to you and I will put my arms around you. And I'll thank God each and every day for the child that I have. Because you see, from that day to this day, I have never ever forgotten what it means to be a child of God. To say that I'm a Christian when you put up your hands is one thing. To be a Christian is entirely another thing. When days are dark and friends are few, when things happen and when there's turmoil and when there's conflict and when things are falling apart, sometimes you and I as Christians, we fall apart but God is the one that watches over you. I want you to know that when your child or when your family, when your church, when things go wrong, they will go
person in this place who should think and believe that you are not. Next verse, please, my friend. Next verse. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Next verse. Neither height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from what? Nothing can separate you and me from God. The problem is, friends, and here is the problem. You and I separate ourselves from him. You are the cause of your own failure. If you put up your hand and said you're going to heaven and I don't see you there, the only reason you won't be there is because of you. Not anybody else. You get people who say, the one didn't greet, Pastor, the one didn't come and greet me at the door. And sometimes when you go to the church, then they give you the hand. Come stand here, my brother. When we shake one another's hands, how are you today, my brother? No, no, don't be, no, be drinking. You know. you know, yeah, yeah. Almost like he's got, he's got dirt in his hand. Whereas you're supposed to take his hand. How are you today? And, and, and remember, when he says he's good, sometimes he's bad. And sometimes you and I lie. You mustn't lie. If you're having a bad day and you ask me how you are, I'm going to say, I'm having a bad day, man. I'm broke. I got no, 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 sorry. I don't want to talk to you now. That is our problem. Are you with me? Thank you, my friend. Are you with me? When we are Christians, we need to be genuine with one another because nothing can separate us from God. Nothing can take us from the presence of his love. Nothing can remove you from this table. And remember, this table is here for each and every one of you. Now, it's time to tell another story, and it's time for me to close. I was serving in a district in South Africa, East London. It's far away from where I'm staying at this moment. I had four African churches. Are you with me? Four African churches. In one of these churches, there was a brother by the name of Brother Shlegani, and he taught me the second lesson that I never, ever forgot in my life. Are you with me? Now, the church where they used to serve is in the rural area. It's not like, like Nairobi Central. It's not like this. It was a church out in the Bundus. You know, there in the bush, there where you go down the hills and up the valleys. And it, that's where I was serving. That is where that church was. And it was in the month of winter when they, were, when they have rains and it's cold. We were going to have a communion service. Are you with me? And I was on that day to serve communion in Kwelecha Church. But two days before that day, it started to rain. Now, the members in that church, they stay about 12, 15 kilometers from the church. They don't have, I was the only person in that church that had a car. Everybody else in that church did not have a car. They used to leave from home at 4 o'clock in the morning to be at church at 9 o'clock in the morning. That is when they would leave to come to, to church. It had been raining for two days. And Brother Slegani stayed the furthest, and he walked from where he was. Now, Brother Slegani was not a rich person. He did not have all the amenities I had. He was a plain, simple man. He had shoes that had holes in them. He had an attire that he would come to God that was the best attire that he could bring. Are you with me? And on that day, because he had holes in his shoes and under his feet, he walked from there and he had to walk through the river, through the mud and through the valley and come to church.
see everybody. <laughs> and everybody's looking now at the pastor to see what the pastor is going to do. And he took off the other shoe and... But it was then when the Spirit of God spoke to me. I went and I took the water and I put it into the jug. And as I put it into the jug, Brother Segani took off the other sock and he pulled off the shoes. And as he pulled off the shoes, from that day to this day, this service is my best service. I will never forget it. I will not forget it until the day I die. And I took my hands and I put it on Brother Slegani's shoulders and I said, Lord, I don't know what plan you have today, but whatever your plan is, be with me. It was when I opened my eyes and took Brother Slegani's feet and I put it into the water, I learned a lesson that God taught me in the text that I've read to you. From that feet into the water, what happened is I saw the dirt I saw the filth. I saw the stickiness and the stench. And as I washed those feet of Brother Thikani's, I understood how God takes our sin and sets us free. I saw that day that where water that was clean, it became filthy. And when it became filthy, God says to me, sometimes that is how you are and that is how I am. And you see, sometimes when we wash each other's feet, we choose carefully whose feet we want to wash because we don't want to wash somebody with stinky feet. We make sure that we put powder under our feet and we do all that. That day, Brother Slegani taught me a lesson in humility I never forgot for the rest of my life. From that day till this day, when I go to that place or that area, that old man, when he sees me, he will run. He will say, Mpundis, he will put his arms around me and he will lift me up and he will hold me and he will hug me and he will say, this is my pastor. This is my minister. But you see, what Brother Slegani does, the, the things, is that he doesn't remember or realize what he did for me was more than I ever did for him. In me, it's the washing of his feet that is important. But to me, he taught me the lesson of how God washes us free from our sins. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who will do the opposite in all our needs? Only Christ can set us free. Only Christ can do the work that needs to be done. Only Christ can make a change in your life. I don't know how the circumstances are there with you. I don't know what the challenges of this church is. I don't know what issues you face. But I want to say Christ is our only hope. Christ is the one that we need to turn to. Christ is the one we need to represent. Christ is the one we need to be like. Christ is the one who is our salvation. And if he is not, you are in trouble. And if you are not, Lilo, you are going to burn in the fires of hell. Because there is no place in that place for sinners. If we have issues and items with one another and you don't make them right and you don't set them free, if you don't come put your feet under this table, you are unworthy. Because when it comes to communion, when it's time to go there where we need to wash each other's feet, then you're walking. I'm not going to do that one's feet today. That one didn't say sorry to me. What? Who you? Think of what he done. He is the one who hung on the cross, who paid the